we know that uh, whenever a refraction of light happens, whenever light goes from one medium to another medium, it bends. Uh, one of the reasons for that, the velocity of light changes whenever it goes from one medium to another medium. Uh, so, uh, basically, we use the uh, scenario whenever you have a light, uh, some part of the light is outside the medium, I mean, you can call it the CSR interface. In that CSR interface, you have some part of the light that is in the air, in the air over here, and some part of the light is already in the medium. So basically, we took this to a, a triangle over here, which is a triangle that we have. And uh, I leave you guys, uh, you know, like uh, uh, this is the a ray of light hitting on the interface. Um, so uh, this is very interesting, but uh, in the meantime, uh, you have to understand this one. We are going from one medium to another medium, okay, air to water, let's say. Then, this is a normal, okay, so you are hitting uh, the interface, okay, you are from uh, angle, okay. This is the ring, one of the rings, okay. And you define theta 1 or theta i angle of incidence as like this. It's supposed to go in a very fast. Okay? The dark line over here represents that you are traveling very fast. But because of the property of light, it will bend. So if you want the air water in the place, this is the transmitted or refracted ray, and this is the theta t. Uh, in the figure over there, we define as a theta t. Okay? So in this situation, if you consider that n i is the refract index of the interest medium, and if n is the refract index of the interest medium, then uh, Snell's law is and I sine theta I equal to N T sine theta. <laughs> I mean, we went like a crazy mathematics in the last, uh, last lecture, you know, like uh, it was a little boring, I believe, you know. Uh, I went to like a trigonometry, and like a triangle, and uh, everything to prove this one. But it's a very interesting that we can prove it using the hydrogen principle. And uh, over here, so uh, if you consider one is a ray over here, so we are talking about the yeah. this ray over here, it's hitting on the interface and it's going like that. Yeah. Okay. So this is the ray over here and it's hitting into and then it's going like this way. So theta i or theta one is defined like this. This is the angle. It's the normal. The dash line over here is normal. Okay. So and then. The normal this is theta t, we define the theta 2. Okay? But since we need to prove the this uh, this you know n i sin theta i equal to n t sin theta t, I need to consider these two triangles. These two triangles. These two triangles. These angles are outside this triangle. And we play with the geometry that this angle is equal to this angle. Okay, we play with geometry. Like I saw that, you know, like if we get them together, we can put them together as an angle, and uh, you can make sure that this is theta 1. Similarly, I hope that you also play with that. So this is theta 2, and why this is theta 2, and this angle is going to be theta 2. Anyone of you that have an idea? Because I didn't do it um, for you guys. This angle is 90 degrees. So anyone of you, you guys can tell me why this angle is theta 2 or this triangle is going to be on this side. Anyone of you guys can tell me why? In other words, you can define it as theta 1, theta 1, and this is theta 2. And if I draw the triangle like that, this is a ray of light, and you have um, let me use the color. So 
So uh, this example I gave is a 90 degree. Uh, Ecuador bag is exactly uh, this 90 degree over here. If this is theta 2, why this is theta 2 in that triangle? Because you are talking about the light, you are already into the one for glass. The second triangle over there, if this is theta 2, why this angle is theta 2? Anyone can tell me why? This is a high school geometry. What is the total angle in a triangle? 180. This is right angle triangle, this is already 90 degree, right? So if you assume that this angle is, you know, uh, this arbitrary angle, let's say uh, this is the uh, alpha and I call it beta, okay? So right now I don't know what is this angle, but I think it's beta. Okay? So, uh, So over here, if I did alpha plus beta, this is the one triangle, it's a 90 degree already. So if total sum is 180 degrees, and it's already 90 degree over here, alpha plus beta should be 90. I think you agree with that. 90. I think at least the velocity of light in each one. This is like a four triangle, it's a normal. So if you take this one, alpha plus is actually going to be 90 because of like a 90 alpha plus is actually going to be 90. No, you just play with math back here. So let me subtract this one. So over here, minus, minus. So this one cancel out. So all of us are cancel out, it's going to be 0. Beta minus is actually going to be 0. So whatever the angle beta you are looking for, so in the triangle, this angle is right. It's like a, a geometry, and you might have already know. I mean, uh, in the class, you know, we have like a you know, wide spectrum of students. Some students are very smart. Some are average. Some are little below that. So my job is to make sure that whatever the lecture I deliver over here, you follow it. I mean, don't feel bad that, okay, professor is going like a very simple stuff. Sometimes you might feel like that, you know. So lecture is for all of you guys, not only for you, right? So uh, please, you know, uh, don't be like, you know, um, and all that. So anyway, so this is very important. So I'm going to extend the homework. Um, so whenever we uh, have a light going from one medium to another medium, uh, so uh, basically um, the velocity change, and then we define a new quantity. Uh, remember that we define that refractive index of a medium, which is going to be uh, C divided by V. And uh, if I have to find the velocity, it's going to be C divided by B, um, sorry, C. N, N, okay. So N is a refractive index. Um, basically, refractive index of a material depends on the density, how heavy is the material. And C is the velocity of light. C is the velocity of light. It's constant. It's 3.0 to 0, 10 power 8 meter per second. That is standard value, okay. And N value, N is a refract index of a material, okay? So usually the refract index of material is like a measure, I mean, uh, taking the vacuum as a standard value. The vacuum has a value of one. So I might have like a number, uh, I, I don't have it over here. Uh, so vacuum has a number of one, so give me a second. So, So I want to show you the chart, it's like a, um, I might find it over here. Um, 
So depending on the material, you have a different value of this one. Um, Percentage uh, let me show this one. Uh, where okay, well, like a super high value because you know, we have like a, uh, some air, um, in the air you might have like oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, every like uh, gases, you know, water vapor is there, right? So it, it will be a little bit denser than you know, like a vacuum because vacuum has a lot of air, right? So we have a little bit higher value, not but super high value. You can see that. So over here, oh, uh, so over here a little bit higher. But if you go to like you know, a little bit uh, different version, let's say water, it has a 1.3. Okay, and ice is a little bit like a 1.31. Glass is about 1.5. And the glass is like a different, like a, depending on what kind of glass it is, you might have a little bit different value, okay? And diamond is like a high, so like a, the highest value in the, uh, I think uh, so far I know, it has like a 2.4. Like a diamond is very heavy, it's like a density is so high, okay? Anyway, long story short, the N value, the N value is more than one. For the like any medium, okay. So that means if you divide this number with uh, more than one value, your velocity will be smaller because you are dividing some larger number, you have smaller value. So when you are like a light tra travel to any medium, then the velocity will be smaller. So if light goes from here to water, okay, it will be smaller. Okay, so this is the um, general information about that. The velocity of light depends on the medium it is traveling. Okay. So this is what it means. Um, and uh, we talk about the total internal reflection now. Uh, I think I gave already some information about this one. Um, so whenever we are traveling from one medium to another medium, the light bends, and um, and there's a phenomena called total internal reflection. Um, I believe in the first class of I mean, the first or second class, I discussed about that. But let me revise it. Uh, whenever light goes from one medium to another medium, um, light bends, and bending happens um, in uh, different directions, uh, either in the. Okay, so it's. Uh, What's the good way? Let's say I mean we consider like air water, air water interface. Your water is denser, density is higher, and it's a rear, less denser, rear. So this is a theta i and theta. Yeah. It bends towards the normal. But if you consider that light is going from the rear to denser medium, or denser to rear medium, let's say you are going from denser, denser to rear. In other words, let's say you have a glass which is denser, and you are going to air, and you have uh, this diagram. This is theta i, and it's a normal. It's of course to go straight path, but it bends again. The bending happens. This is straight path is supposed to travel. If bending happens, this is theta i. This is theta t. Okay. So whenever I talk about total internal reflection, what I did? Okay, so I will change the, the angle that the incident light is gonna hit on the surface. If I increase this one, it will bend further like that. Because theta is gonna be higher. Right? So if I go further, 
further like that, at some moment it will go along the line. So that it makes a 90 degree angle. The angle, the incident angle, if we your real life parallel to the interface is called critical angle, theta C. This angle is 90 degrees. If you go just above that critical angle, then if you go just above that critical angle, what's going to happen? Like that? Just above that critical angle, you have the light goes like that. You are going from glass and you are coming back to the glass. You are going to the another medium. This is called total internal reflection. All light will be reflected back to the same medium. Okay? It is called total internal reflection, and I already described about that you know, last time. So, uh, total internal reflection, and uh, this is very important. I told you that when you work with span the signal from optical fiber. The signal can be any, any signal, okay? It doesn't mean that a light signal, okay? It can be other kind of you electromagnetic know, signal, or ultrasound, you know, anything. The sound is also a kind of wave, right? So whenever you send a signal through like a, an optical fiber, that is made like this, you know, you can bend. And uh, how many of you guys have seen optical fiber? <coughs> How many of you guys have seen the optical fiber or fiber optics? You? Okay. So basically optical fiber, you can bend. You know, <coughs> not all the way, I mean like a metal, but you can bend up to some extent. Okay? So usually this in you know, optical fiber is made out of you know, uh, glass or plastic. You have like some uh, something over here. You have air because you are uh, in the air outside, you have uh, some metal over here. So if you send a signal over here, let's say you see the book, it's like this. It hit at some angle such a way that it is always greater than the critical angle. So once you are greater than the critical angle, you will reflect back to the same medium, you reflect back to the same medium. So basically the signal, signal transmission through the optical fiber is like almost 100%, okay? Uh, there might be some small leakage, but like a more or less 100%. So that's the reason that we use this one uh, for like a transferring the signal from one to the signal, okay? Uh, this was the optical fiber and the concept of optical fiber. So um, let me find what is the critical angle over here. The critical angle is this one. The critical angle is the theta i value. When you have a theta t value is 90 degree, okay? So if you use the Snell's law, n i sine theta i equal to n t e sine theta t, this formula. So if you have a n i, and sine theta c. Once you have a critical angle, you have n t sine. The theta t value will be 90 degrees because your real flight goes like this, and this angle will be <coughs> okay. So sine 90 is one, right? So sine 90 is one. So this is one. For the one, so n i sine theta c equal to n t and uh, if you divide by n i on the both sides it's going to cancel out if you want to find theta c value it will be sine inverse of n t divided by n i this is the critical angle formula so if somebody asks you to find critical angle just use that formula and you can derive that form using the scale stop. Okay? So critical angle can be given by um, 
sine inverse and t divided by a. Any questions so far? Okay, uh, I have a one question over here. Um, one question about here before I go to the next topic. Um, so, so let's talk about this one. Um, this is a very simple topic. Uh, you might figure that out easily, but um, so let me give you explanation about this one. Uh, you have a ray of light going from one medium to another medium. So you have an air and water interface, and uh, you need to find a couple of things uh, in the from A, B, C, D. Uh, so you have an A, B, C. So let me uh, give you information about this one. So, uh, so you have a ray of light, as shown in figure, uh, that it is going from um, water to air. So the interface is between water and air. Um, over here, we have the ray of light going from um, Water to air. So from here, the interface between uh, air, air, and this is the water. <coughs> and it is hitting at some angle. I mean, that's why you will call it theta i. Theta i. And it's supposed to travel straight past, but because the refraction of light, it will bend, and bending happens uh, depending on where it is going uh, over here. So you have water is denser, denser, it is rare. So if you are going from denser to rare medium, so this is a normal, this is normal. It doesn't want to like a bend towards the normal, it bends away from the normal. So angle that the transmitted ray makes with the um, with the normal is called theta. So this is the what we learn. So over here, uh, a ray of light is incident in the water, strike the surface. I mean you have a, assuming that the water surface is flat and it's separate from the air and whenever light hit on the on the interface it hit at an angle of 10 degree with the normal so you have given that this heat at some angle of 10 degree with the normal so we have given the theta i value the theta i value equal to 10 degrees And we have given the refractive index of air and water. So air is like a ND. So over here, light is going from NI. It is given like water is 1.3. NT is 1. We have given just 1. Okay. So NI value. NI value is given uh, 1.3. NT value is 1. Okay. Given this information, I need to find what is the angle of refraction. So the angle of refraction, okay, I need to find. So over here, I need to find in this formula, in this, I need to find A. So the angle of refraction I just represent as a theta t. I need to find what is the theta t. Right? And uh, I know that Snell's law is over here. Snell's law. Snell's law. So in the Snell's law, in this form, we have given a theta value, we have given a theta value, and you have given, can you calculate theta t value? Yeah, that's the only one on in this equation, right? So uh, use this one. 
So uh, n i sine theta i equal to n t sine theta. Just use this term plus two get us theta t. Everything is known over here except theta t in this equation, and just use that one. sentence I want to have a angle of refraction theta is not greater than 45 so I need to find the corresponding theta i value so let me try over here the part b over here it's a conditional sentence what should the angle of incidence so I need to find theta i what but well, it's a conditional sentence that the theta 2 or theta t not greater than 45 it can be smaller but it cannot be greater than 45. It should be smaller than 45. It can be 45, so 44.999 something. But it shouldn't be the greater than 45. 45 or greater than 45. This is the condition sentence. I need to find the corresponding theta value. So what should I do? I'm definitely the, do the same thing. So n i sine theta i equal to n t sine theta t. Okay. You know what is the n i value? The n i value is one. One point three times sine theta i. That I need to find n t is one sine. So you have a, like a less than this one, so for simplicity you just put like equal, so I just put like equal. If I have a 45, what can I have? So in this equation you have one one unknown, that is theta i, right? You just get it. Any one of you guys can help me to get this number? It's a very simple one. You have a 1.3 times sine theta i, and I need to find theta i value from here. Sine 45, it has some number. One times sine 45, it gives me some number. And any one of you guys can tell me what the number you got. Yeah, 32.9. Are you point? You got like that? Okay. But you have point that is equal, right? Yes. So whenever you have like a less than, you need to put less than that. So whenever you have like this one, you put equal over here, so if you want to have less than, so it will be less than. The last one is that what is the critical angle? And we just derive the formula for critical angle, see? Right? We just derive that formula. And the formula you don't have to memorize. In the exam, even if I ask you the same question, so if I ask uh, theta c, sine inverse, and 
in the value of n and the sign inverse n values given, uh, n divided by 1 is equal to 1 point. Um, Whatever the number is called, that goes. Critical angle is this, where the light doesn't escape. It's a very uh, simple or very useful uh, information yeah. about the light goes from 1 medium to another medium. It acts more like a mirror, more or less mm -hmm. and it just reflects off. Back down. Do you have any questions so far? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I this assume spot, that this this is you're going to get a similar equation in just one. That's past the critical angle. That's past the um, critical angle. Any equation you see in the exam, whether it be either from homework or class notes, that would be the critical angle. Mm -hmm. One B from right there. outside. Alright, so if you don't have any question, uh, let me go at another topic. Um, it talks about the light source, and uh, there are two kind of light source, and we're going to go one by one. So let's talk about this one. Um, light source. So light. We define it two kind of source. One is called coherent source, and incoherent source. Um, so before that, I must have uh, talked about the, the wave, and uh, I, I mean, you might know already the wave, what is the wave, and uh, the wave, we talk about that, the wave is the propagation, you can define it as a function of angle, you can define it as a function of time, Phase angle, and there are many kind of wave. Okay, so whenever I talk, discuss about that, uh, like wave, I might discuss about sine wave, cosine wave. There are simple wave. Okay, but there's a triangular wave, solid wave. You know, like there's square wave. If you are electronics guy, you know, like electrical engineering or electronic engineering. You guys know better, okay, what kind of signal you send. And you can use like the interposition scope, you can visualize now what kind of signal you are sending. Okay? So uh, just over here for simplicity, I'm just talking about that. Simple sign wave. And uh, so this is a magnetic field. Okay? So over here is a zero and it's a pi over two. Five, three pi over two, and two pi. So one complete period. So once a half complete period, then you can have this repetition of this one period. Okay, and I represent the time taken to make one complete period is called time period or something which is just period. Okay, one complete cycle is called period. And over here, so you are talking in terms of in terms of phase angle, but if you describe you describe the same point in terms of time, this is a t, the total time t. This point is going to be half. It's going to be t over two. This is going to be t over four. And what this point is going to be? Anyone can tell me what this point is going to be? Three quarter. Three T over. You can describe this point in terms of either angle or time. Okay. So anyway, now we talk about frequency. The frequency gives an information about how fast the signal repeats. If you have a signal like this, and if you have another signal like that, let's say this is a wave number one, the wave number two, the wave number two will be faster than a wave number one. So that means this has a higher frequency. I have to do it. So 
frequency means like a how fast is repeated. Now, let me talk about the column. Each frequency has one column. Okay? So, um, so let's talk about the, the light from the sun. Okay? Uh, sun light. How many colors do you see in the sunlight? If you have an experiment, mm -hmm. you must have done this experiment, the light in a monitor in the prism, right? Mm -hmm. or, and basically you see in a spectrum there are different colors. Have you done this kind of experiment in the high school or something like that? The light hitting on a prism, and then uh, you will see the different colors over here spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so like you can separate like different colors over here. How many colors you see? Seven colors. Okay, seven colors. Um, you don't have to tell because all of the colors, one of them is like a red color and red violet uh, and. Uh, uh, indigo. I mean, there are like many colors. I mean, I even myself don't even know all of them, but there are seven colors. You have the seven colors means you have a seven frequencies. Each frequency have a one color. Okay. So each frequency means each frequency means. So if I have the wave that is made out of seven frequency, the frequency means a repetition. Like that, then we have one color. They have a the same frequency. They have one color. The light is made out of like a many, many like waves over there. Basically, you have a one frequency. So if you have a source of light that has the same frequency, is called foreign source. Okay. There are two kinds of light source over here, foreign and foreign. One is foreign. This is foreign. <coughs> the simple definition is that you have a one frequency, one frequency. You have multiple frequency. I mean, it's a mixture, like a light has a mixture of like many, many colors. Many, many colors means you have more than one frequency. That kind of light source is called incoherent. So in the nature, you will see both coherent and incoherent light source. I mean, I already gave an example of some light that has many colors, that means you have a many frequency, okay? So uh, you can see that if the light is coming from either ball or like other things, you have a color, that is made out of like a different frequency. This is a one frequency, let's say. Yeah, red has like a small frequency. Because like a swing very like a very slowly, right? In the meantime, you have a green and then you have a blue color, which has like another like a frequency. So basically, it is made out of several frequencies. So that means you have a different color. That kind of light source is called incoherent light source. And laser light, you can see this is the laser light over here, it's a green laser. It has a volume one frequency and that kind of light source is called four light source. Okay, so there are two kind of light sources. Now, let's talk about superposition of two waves. Okay, so this is very important. Um, whenever you superpose two waves that have a same frequency, you have the same frequency over there. Then what going to happen? So let me uh, talk about this one. Um, so let the two waves superimpose one another. They have the same frequency, but they have a different amplitude. They have a different amplitude. So what's going to happen? 
happen at that time. So when you are mixing, or you super impose one another, <coughs> what's gonna happen? All right, so let's have a Wave, I represent this wave like a, I just particularly I just want a sine wave. Yeah. So I have a same frequency, but different amplitude. Okay, they have a same frequency because you, know, you can see that they are varying together. They start from the same point. Okay. Now, if I allow to mix them together, so basically you have a big wave. Whatever you mix, whenever superimposition happens, you will see. That sign is the superimposition of these two waves. You can see the signal having the bigger amplitude. Okay, this is the amplitude on the y axis. So this is the angle, phase angle of whatever. The angle, phase angle. You have amplitude, let's say A. So when you were two waves, they superimpose at this time you have a result gonna be a wave of same frequency but a higher amplitude. Let me give another scenario that you have a same thing but at this time you are out of phase. So let's be present with like this. But you are out of this. Let's say uh, your second wave black color one is represented by the red color if you allow the mix what can happen one is positive amplitude one another one is negative amplitude but they have the same frequency because the variation looks the same so the result gonna be since this is bigger than this one you will see The result look like this. You have a resultant gonna be smaller than the individual wave they are mixing. Okay, so um, this is how we define. This is called constructive interference. This is called constructive interference. Constructive interference. So you can say interference as a mixing and we call it destructive interference. Destructive. So there's a two kind of interference, like a superimposition of two waves. One is constructive or destructive, depending on whether <coughs> you have two signals of same frequency in phase or out of phase, okay? This is called in phase signal and this is called out of phase signal. So I'll tell you what is the meaning of that. So this is called out of phase. <coughs> out of phase. Phase. This is called in phase signal. So in phase 
and outer face. If you have an interference between two waves of the same frequency and they are in a same phase, you're gonna have constructive interference. That means you will see the resultant wave that's gonna be bigger in amplitude compared to their individual wave they are mixing. Okay? And uh, if the two waves they are out of phase, then you will see the resultant signal is represented by this dash color over here, dash line. That will be amplitude even smaller than the, the wave they are mixing there. Okay? So this kind of interference is called destructive interference. Now, I need to tell you what is in phase and out of phase. So what is the in phase and out of phase signal uh, mean? So let me talk about that. So for that, I need to talk about the phase difference, okay? The so phase difference means uh, whenever we plot the Whenever we plot two signal over here, we can, uh, let's say you have a wave like this. You just plot as a function of phase angle, okay? Some people just write angle, but this is a phase angle. So let's have a signal like this. Okay? So I'm plotting in function of phase angle. This is zero, this is a sine, sine wave, zero, and this is a pi over two. This is a pi over two. The pi over two has the maximum value in the sine wave. There are pi and this point is 3 pi over 2 and this is 3 pi if we keep on going it's going to be 3 pi this is going to be 4 pi and this is going to be 5 pi and this is going to be 6 pi if you keep on going like that, like that. if I have another signal that start from here I represent which are like a different color so let's say this is the wave number 2 and it's a wave number 1 so what is the phase difference Delta phi. I usually represent the delta phi, but people are you represent the different symbol. What is the phase difference between these two waves? Your wave number one is start from here. But wave number two start one after the wave number one completes the phase angle of 2 pi. This point is 2 pi for the wave number one, but this is zero for the two, right? The phase difference is going to be delta phi. It will be 2 pi minus zero. Will be 2 pi. Phase difference is going to be 2 pi. Now, the question for you guys, if I have a wave number 3, <coughs> I represent the red color, what will be the phase difference between wave number 1 and wave number 3? Zero. They start from the same point. Now, <coughs> no matter you have phase difference of 0 or phase difference of 2 pi, the maxima and maxima, minima of minima of this all of three waves 
they lie together. Maxima, point light on the maxima of this one. Minima light, minima. Maxima light on the maxima, minima point on the maxima over there. If this is a scenario, and if we let them mix together, then we have a constructive interference. That's exactly what is happening over here. The maxima and minima, they lie together. Whenever you add, you need to add individual away over here. This amplitude value, this amplitude value, you're gonna have a higher value over here, right? So basically, you are adding them together to make like a very big wave. This kind of interference is called a constructive interference. The criteria for the constructive interference is that in phase, the wave has to be in phase. The meaning of in phase is that if you have a phase difference of 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, in other words, if it is an integer multiple of 2 pi, giving that a equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, then we have a constructive interference and we call they are in phase signal. I already gave an example of 0 and 2 pi phase. If my wave starts from here, there's a different wave, let's say I represent it with like a gas line. Like that. The phase difference between the wave number one and wave number, like represented with this four, the phase difference is going to be four five. Even if you have a four five, the maxima, maxima, minima, minima, they lie together. Whenever they mix together, they make a very big, you know, wave at the bigger amplitude. So we're going to have a constructive interference. Okay. So long story short. To have a constructive interference, the phase difference between the two waves is going to be integer multiple of 2 pi. Okay? And n represents 0, 1, 2, 0, 3. So if I have n equal to 0, n times 0 is going to be 0. If n equal to 1, it's going to be 2 pi. If it's 2, it's going to be 4 pi, 6 pi, something like that. Okay? So this is called constructive interference. And uh, over here, out of phase we start, what is the phase difference between between the red and, I mean, let me say wave number one and wave number two. So you have, uh, let's say from the, this, uh, the wave number one, the wave number one is easier for me because it's a normal, it's a pi over two, this is pi, and this is uh, 3 pi over 2, and it's going to be 2 pi, something like that, and it's going to be 3 pi, and it's going to be 4 pi. Any one of you guys can tell me what is the phase difference between wave number 1 and wave number 2 over here? It's a pi. How do you know? If you move this one by pi, if you move this point over here, they're gonna have a same variation. So if I move this one over here, this gonna have a minimum, this gonna have a maximum, this gonna have a minimum like that. The phase difference gonna be delta pi gonna be pi. If you have phase difference of pi, three pi, pi pi, they keep on going. Then we call it out of phase, and we're gonna have a destructive interference. So I can rewrite this one as a uh, n, okay, two uh, n plus one pi, n equal to zero. If you have a zero, it's gonna be zero pi. So if you have a one, so two plus one three pi. If I have a two, it's gonna be two two four plus five pi. Yeah. So this one will be like that. We call it out of phase. So we have a constructive and destructive interference depending on 
whether we are in phase or out of phase. Was that that pi? This? How is that pi? Yeah, what's that? Two, two, two. So how do we subtract it? Where do we subtract it? Subtract it. He's saying mm -hmm. that the like the peak of the black line is pi off from the peak of the white line. Any question? Okay, so actually like pi off. If you shift the pi, mm -hmm. then we have Okay, the peak um, of the so this is one of the uh, uh, things that. Um, you uh, you might uh, might have to go through this one. Um, what is it? Whenever we have a mixing happen, okay. So, what was the question? It's not just so simple mixing. Right. There is a quantum mechanics. You know, you you may uh, you may find it later on. So over here, so this is a very interesting. So in, in, in this one. one that's um, if they're both, are, the dark, if they're both uh, are moving, going like this, okay? mm -hmm. then you add Over here, and they add to each other. So if one's going up on the other side, then you Let's talk about construct interference. Whenever you have a construct interference between two waves, having the same frequency, okay? It's not an amplitude, it's the simple sum of sum of individual uh, waves, okay? Um, so over here, let's say uh, you have okay, this one. I have constructed interference and uh, for simplicity let me use the another color. And I'm plotting as a function of function of amplitude and as a function of you know you can uh, I mean if it's only it's not very important at the time, let's say. You have an amplitude value A1 for the wave number one and for the wave number two, let's say you have an A2. You have A1 and A2. And maxima and minima, minima and minima, they lie together, we're gonna have a constructive interference. Right? We have a construct interference. So, uh, whenever you talk about intensity of light, that you know, like uh, intensity. Any one of you guys know what is an intensity of light mean? Physically, what that mean? How bright it is. So if you talk about intensity of light, light number one and light number two, so if the total intensity I, I want to talk about, it won't be like say I1 plus I2. It's not just summation of intensity of light one and intensity of light two. But something comes in between, it's called This term over here, two times square root of I1 times I2. If somebody asks you to find what is the total intensity, if light one has a intensity of let's say five, and light two has an intensity of ten, what gonna be total intensity? It won't be like a ten plus five, fifteen. You have something coming in between. And this term over here is positive. That means it's gonna make, let's say this other five. I'm just making it about five. Five, and this other 10. It won't be one 10 plus five, 15. You're gonna have 
something plus. You're gonna have some addition of this one. And this club, whatever you add over here, is gonna have mixing of I1 and I2. You have a cross term. It's not simple addition. Like you know, have you taken like a biology? So whenever like you know you have a parents and like a, you know like a parents, you have a like you know like a mixing happens you know, like you know like whenever you have you seen like a genetics you know how it's like a, your off off spring gonna be? I think so. How it works? I'm sorry. How it works? Yeah. So basically you have like a, some kind of like a like kind of hybridized is called a hybrid. If you have like a take on the chemistry, uh, you may or may not know. This is sp2 hybridization, sp3 hybridization, sp hybridization. Have you seen like that? You know, like a, a whenever like a orbital mix together, it won't be like s orbital, it won't be t orbital, but it's gonna be like a something has a some character of s orbital, some character from p orbital, but it's like different animal, kind of. Okay, so you have like a, your parents, like you know, your father is like a very tall, and you're like a uh, mother is not that tall, or like you know, like a, you have a different. Um, Complex and like one is a little bit darker than another one. Your off offspring gonna be like a little bit different, or sometimes a mixing of like those things. You know, like a, this is what I mean. The biology people talk about. Similarly, the chemistry people also talk like that. Whenever the sp two or sp three hybridization happens, if you have a methane molecule, methane molecule, how the methane molecule is formed, something like that. They talk about small minor detail. How the orbital gonna hybridize? How the carbon, like you know, p orbital gonna hybridize? Something like that. In the same way, the optics over here. So we are not just like adding like I one and I two. I'm like I have a some you know contribution that is like cross term. That depends on both like one and like two in density. Okay, this is very very important. The origin for this one is. is from the quantum mechanics, okay? It's like a, um, it's not simple addition. It's not simple superposition of two like intensities. It's not just simple, this one, you have some contribution over here, okay? That makes even bigger than, that because it's a positive term, you are adding this one, even bigger than what it's supposed to be coming from the combination of I1 and I2, okay? And this is called, uh, it's like a mixing term, okay? So anyway, so this is the story about the uh, constructive interference. In a constructive interference, if you talk about the intensity of light, then intensity of light won't be the simple sum of the intensity of light you are mixing. It has some cross term, okay? And that is coming from the interference effect. It's called interference effect. Okay, so it's like a coming from the mixing of the light. Okay, and it has an origin. You may not like, hey, how come light is like a mixing? Light, how light can mix? This has a quantum mechanics as an origin. Okay, so one quantum mechanics can help you to understand that. But we can derive using the simple math over here. So if you have a light of, if you have a light. <coughs> About that. Oh, I have a one part in there. Okay, uh, let me finish so quickly. It's a very simple mathematics. Um, if you have a amplitude A1, the intensity of light is given by I um, I1 is like a C1, C1 A1 squared. Okay, it's given like that. And you have a I2 which will be C2, A2 is one, so light one, light two, amplitude let's say A1 and A2. So if you mix together, let's say the amplitude is gonna be A gonna be A1 plus A2. Amplitude is gonna be mixing together. So if I want to find this is a net, okay, net amplitude. 
If you want to find the intensity of light, you after you mix, which is going to be, uh, let's say, uh, C, A is one. Okay, so this one over right here, C. Okay, C, A one plus A two is one. Right? And uh, you can just like uh, do some math magic over so here. This is A plus B over this one, C. A1 square plus A2 square plus 2 A1 A2 like that and you know um, so you can have percentage of you guys just put like C so first term going to be I'm just using the one the first term going to be C A1 square the C A1 square is I want, right? And second term gonna be C A two square, which is gonna be I two plus. Third one gonna be C A one. What is C? If you play smart, you can play with smart. So it's gonna be like this. So you have a I one plus I two plus. You have a two. You play with smart. If you take this one into the like a square root, so you have a C. A1 square and A2 square. Okay. Right? Because, so you have A1 square, so A1 square is square root cancel out, you have A1 square root and A square cancel out. You have a C square, you can take square root out of this one, you're going to have one square. So if this one gives you actually I1 plus A2 square, which is going to be A2 square plus A2 square, which is going to be A2 square plus A2 square, which is going to be A2 square plus this is how you put the net intensity value. Anyway, uh, so similarly, if you have a distract and distract you have a minus term over here, um, definitely I didn't assign you like a home property value. Um, so with that, I'm going to finish the class for today. And uh, the next time, I'm going to talk about the how is that square root? Uh, hmm? How is that square root? Square root? Yeah. 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 Yeah.